The next thing you're gonna let Boy,
that if I go down and join her, I will take her to Maryland. Number two. Thank you. 
Check, 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 check. Check one, two, check one, two. Sixteen, set eleven, and attack one. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Dig 17, set 15. Attack somebody, dig one, skips on attack 11. Dig nine, set 15, attack two, continue. 
set to attack 15, dig 12, set 11, attack 15. Check, 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 check.
Welcome into the Cat Eye Network. My name is Michael Trevello. Happy to have your company. Taylor Pritchett alongside me in a loud Moore Gymnasium. Apologies for the lack of commentary in the first set and the start of the second set. We're working through some audio difficulties here at the broadcast table. Wildcats dropped the first set after being down big and then they came back and made it interesting in that first set, Taylor. Yeah, absolutely. They were uh, down, I think, 18 to 9 at one point, ended up fighting back to a 25 to 21 uh, loss. That kind of a, a pushback, though, is something, is momentum that you can carry into the next set and something that they have clearly done with it being 12 to 13 now. And now, as you said, it's now 14 to uh, 12 as the service goes long from Jasmine Moore. Tonight was senior night here at Moore Gymnasium. We honored a couple of people, Jasmine Moore, Melina Spencer, Kate Hall, Price, Madison, Coates, uh, Essence, Bell, and Janlene DeJesus. And trying to defeat FAMU one more time before they leave the maroon and gold. Interestingly, this is not their final home game. They'll have three more contests in this building as the SWAC pro play will come here at the end of next month. Quick set to the middle and tap to the back corner. That's Isis Williams, the redshirt senior for Florida a &M. She's the team leader in blocks. This Florida a &M team is the two-time reigning and defending SWAC volleyball champions. And Brooklyn Watts was SWAC preseason player of the year. Joust stays on BCU's side. Delahousse off the block, Essence Bell recovers. Second block for the Rattlers in the rally. And they can't get a third as the Rattlers close it down. That's Isis Williams again. And that's a tough one there. You saw Madison Coach trying to uh, trying to snag a point for the Wildcats by dumping it over, but uh, Hudson, Brooke Hudson, the libero for FAM, was just right there waiting for it to happen. Ended up putting a perfect ball up to their setter and, and getting that kill. Hudson, the graduate transfer from Colorado State, in the middle blocker, Kalia Todd, put that one down on the overpass. BCU takes a timeout. So we can catch up a little bit on what we've missed in the first set. What did you see in that first set, even though the Wildcats did end up falling, that maybe we can hang on to here in set number two? Yeah, they were really kind of holding themselves together, making sure that their offense was functioning at a really high level. Um, they were missing uh, number one, Niara Hightower, for that first set, and were missing a little bit of presence in the middle. Uh, but she has come out and really turned that around since she's gotten back onto the floor, and I think that has really spread out everything that um, the rest of the offense is able to do. FAMU out blocking BCU 7-3 to in the match so far and now killing 24-18. to Bethune-Cookman as a team hits 122. They're right around that right now at 113. This FAMU team leads the SWAC in many statistical categories. Best hitting percentage, best kills per set, best assists per set, and best points per set in the SWAC. Yeah, I mean, it, Florida A&M is very, very good. They were very strong in the MEAC, um, which BCU also came from. Now they're still showing that in the SWAC standings. Um, but you have seen them, you know, start to falter a little bit. They they took a loss to Southern this past weekend. That was a, a big deal because that's something that, you know, just last season was um, a very, very difficult matchup for Southern. So. To see FAMU kind of taking these losses, taking these lumps, it really should give VCU a, a kind of jolt in the right direction. This Florida A&M team won 21 matches last year. Currently only nine wins on the campaign. With nine games to go. 
so they will not eclipse their win total from last year. And, and that's just a lot of non-conference games that they were winning last year that didn't win this year. Absolutely. It's, it, I think that Florida A&M really schedules tough in non-conference. They want to make sure that they're playing the best competition so that once conference play comes around, they're, they're prepared for the competition that they're going to see. But that does end up kind of with a little bit of a misleading um, uh, uh, game percentage, you know, win percentage coming into the conference season. I think Florida A&M is much better than um, only having nine wins would suggest but they're definitely holding their own in the spot. Mia Della Huse puts that one down, and this team is really defined by the seniors and then the freshmen. There are some standout freshmen, Mia Della Huse, Chloe Conover, Sydney Poston, Riley Davis, and of course the seniors to Jesus, Spencer Moore, and Coates. Absolutely, there's a, a very um, kind of wide range of players on this team. Everybody is stepping in and doing their job, playing their role really, really well, which is something that you really want to see in a uh, in a team setting. Right now, Bethune Cookman sitting at three and four in the SWAC. They went one and two at the SWAC pool play in Houston last weekend. Another block for Florida A and M. Oh no, BCU actually got that point. Nope, correction, fam, you did get that point. It is 20 to 15. As this set has kind of gone the opposite of set number one, as BCU started strong and fam, has come on later in the set. That's a tough pass to handle. Moore does get it over. Excuse me, Spencer does get it over. Bell back for Spencer again. A powerful hit, and it's down. That's the one thing that BCU does have in spades. They really swing strong on the outside. Absolutely, you know, you, you see that kind of a, um, a swing and a attack from Jasmine Moore. She really put that ball away. A lot of the girls on this team have the ability to go up and just really take a hard swing and put this put the ball on the floor. Nice dump by De La Rosa. This is Camila De La Rosa, the reigning SWAC setter of the week. Leads the team in assist, 440. That's almost 9%. 9% is huge. Now, it's um, a, a little bit helped out by the fact that uh, Florida A&M runs what, what's called a 5-1 often. So it means that De La Rosa gets to set all the way around. She is in the front row currently, um, whereas BCU runs a 6-2 offense. That means that their setter is always in the back row. They'll sub two new people in every time your setter rotates to the front row. So right now you see Alicia Callender, number four, sitting in the back row. She's going to set and play. Now that she's rotated up front, she's actually going to come off. Madison Coates will sub in, and you've got your setter in the back row there. That kind of trade-off makes it difficult for the statistics to show how well this offense is running. But um, definitely, you know, you see a, a lot of good production out of this BCU team. And you do kind of see that in the stats. Is Famu almost lets that one run. Here's the slide attack. Bell keeps it alive. Tapped over, great dig. Hightower blocks it back. Bell into the net. And then Moore can't keep it alive that time. But I was talking about the, the assist statistics. Alicia Callender, the leader on this BCU team with 218, but you've also got a couple more up there. Madison Coates, 202. And those are your primary two setters on this roster. 22-17 now, Florida a and closing in on set number two and a two-set lead in the match, and BCU will take a timeout. Thune Cookman football continues Southwestern Athletic Conference play next Saturday, October 14th, for a homecoming matchup with Texas Southern. Catch all the action on hbcugo.tv or listen live on Cata Network Radio starting at 3 p.m. on youtube.com backslash Cata Network or if you're around the area and unable to make it out to the stadium, you can listen on 1380 W-E-L-E, -E, the cat. We were off the cat last week. If you are going out to the stadium to help alleviate traffic congestion, BCU has partnered with Daytona International Speedway to provide free parking and shuttle services on game day. Shuttles will pick up fans at lot one at the Speedway, departing every 30 minutes starting at 7 a.m. Post-game shuttles will return to lot one immediately after the game for one hour. 
Wildcats down 22-17, a very similar scoreline to one that they found themselves in in the first set. We're able to pull it back to 25-21, but eventually could not close it out. Yeah, the Wildcats are going to have to play very clean here. Um, they've got to get uh, eight points before uh, Florida a and is able to get three. Um, so you, you've got to make sure that you're not handing anything away. You're not giving Florida a and a point off of an unforced error, or off of a, an ace serve. Uh, or anything that you have control over. So this is where you want to play really clean volleyball and make sure that you're taking your opportunities to get the point when they arise and not trying to force them. Top eight in the conference make the SWAC playoffs. VCU currently sitting eighth at three and four in conference play. Off the fingertips of the block. Simmons on the near side. They First contact goes into the ceiling. That's going to be a tough pass. Played over calmly by the libero. Quick set to the middle and Hightower delivers. Hightower is really doing a great job this year of stepping onto the court and owning her position. She is in the top of the conference in blocks. She's in the top of the conference in hitting percentage. Um, it, it's, it's something that she is really taking over kind of the... Um, the role that she's been asked to play, and she's holding this team together as a really great piece of glue out of the middle of the court. You want to talk about hitting percentage on this season, Kate's All Price is hitting 345, which would be tops of the SWAC if she made her total, the total swings per set minimum that the SWAC puts on that statistic. Nice serve by Poston, and a solo block. By Niara Hightower, she gets 1.6 per set. That's tops in the SWAC. That was a fantastic block there by Hightower. You saw her set her feet in front of her opposing middle, look and see where that middle was trying to swing, and then dive her hands into that seam to make sure that she's getting the block for her team. Boston's serve goes into the net. Two points to the second set for Florida and m and then went two and one in that same SWAC cluster, beating Prairie View and Southern, but losing to Texas Southern. Delahousse blocks. There's Isis Williams again. She's in the top five in the conference in blocks. Off the side of the hand of Hightower, and Bethune-Cookman actually gets the point. That's what you call a Christmas gift right there. Wrapped up, put, uh, put right under the tree, and that was a, a Merry Christmas to Coates and Hightower. Well, Bethune-Cookman stand alive. It's set point for Florida A&M at 24-20. Hightower serving. Fingertips, Coates pushes it across, Delahousse down, and the set continues. You'll see Brooklyn Watts, an outside hitter, preseason player of the year for the Southwestern Athletic Conference. She'll be swinging from that left-hand side, but they will go to the right side. Austin. Simmons, Rattlers with a chance to close the set again. And they will with the joust at the net. Oh no, VCU gets the point on a double contact. Looks like uh, they were under the net, just that that set came up a little too tight and Florida A&M ends up running under the net or into the net. Couldn't quite see what was going on there, but it looked like Brooklyn Watts had a net violation. 24-22, timeout Florida A&M. And last year, this game, this, the two matches between these teams were not close. Florida a m won 3-0 both times. And I don't think any set was as close as the first two sets in this game. And I think it shows growth by this BCU team. But you look at their upcoming schedule, they've got at Alabama a m at Alabama State before they host the SWAC cluster. And the SWAC cluster, they'll play Pine Bluff, Grambling State, and Alcorn State. Those three games might be crucial for them making the playoffs. 
very much so. I mean, you, you've got the top eight teams that are going to the Southern Conference, uh, the SWAT Conference Tournament. Um, once you kind of get into the muck of it, you start realizing that there are a whole lot of teams that are right there at that uh, three and one, two and two um, kind of area. And that's where Bethune Cookman is going to end up as well. Once you start kind of stacking up these wins, you hope to get the win tonight. And then going into Alabama A&M and Alabama State, you want to really make sure that you're picking those up going into the SWAC clusters so that as you kind of play these teams that you haven't seen yet, you're able to um, really put yourself ahead above the rest going into the conference tournament. These two teams will play again on the last day of the season, the 10th of November. 24-22, Wildcats trying to keep this set alive and not go down two sets to nil. Watts closes it out and it's two nothing. That was a good run there by Brooklyn Watts. She came into the court a little bit on uh, what we call a 32, so it's a faster set. Um, for the outside, instead of going all the way out to the antenna, she dove inside and hoped to make it past her blocker farther into the court than her blocker was, which she did. AJ Simmons didn't pick her up early enough, and so her feet were not in front of that blocker when she was trying to make her move. It's that same kind of slide attack that Bethune-Cookman has had trouble defending at times this season because they don't run it themselves. They don't see it a lot in practice. Absolutely. It's, it's something where, you know, when you're looking at an offense that um, has a lot of variety, which the Florida A&M offense is really doing well, kind of throwing a bunch of variety in there, that's something that the Wildcats are having difficulty finding and picking up early in order to get their feet in front of it. They're trying to jump and dive their hands into different areas, but if your feet aren't right in the first place, you're going to be too far away to actually get up and get into that hitter's space. We'll take a break for the media timeout. Take about two and a half, three minutes. When we come back, it's set number three. Wildcats backs against the wall, trying to keep this match alive right here on the Cat Eye Network. Wildcat Nation, the Wildcats return to Everbank Stadium this season for another huge SWAC matchup. Come out and support your Wildcats at the home of the Jacksonville Jaguars on Saturday, October 21st. Get your tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. We go to set number three. It is 2-0 FAMU, but two very close sets, 25-21 and 25-22. Yeah, the Wildcats are doing a great job of 
making sure that they're staying in these sets. They're they're letting a couple of runs get in between them and actually being there at the end of the set when it counts. So here's where you really want to try to limit the number of times that Florida A&M gets to serve more than once. Um, that's kind of the mindset that you want to have as you're going back there is that you want to keep them from serving more than one time in a row. Every time Florida A&M goes back to serve, you side out, you get that point, and then you try to serve multiple times yourself. As long as you keep that kind of granular mindset, then eventually, over the course of the entire set, it ends up working out in your favor. Wildcats being out killed 29-24 in the match. Air is almost even 13-12. Total attacks almost even 77 76. FAMU has hitting percentage of 221, which is right bang on their season average. Wildcats hitting at 145, which is actually above their season average of 122 as we start set number three. Mia Della Huse once again showing up with eight kills to lead everybody so far for the Wildcats. Delahuse is really putting a stamp on her freshman year. She is really stepping into her role. You know, it's it's a big deal going from uh, club play into college play. Like, the game is just different. And so for her to step in and really have such a great impact on her team shows how mature she is and how well she's trained up to this point. In football, they'd call that a build-around player, franchise player, someone who, if, if he's going to be here for the next four years, is going to be a centerpiece of this team going forward. Very much so. Brooklyn Watts, dug out of the back. Bell has to play it over. Here's Jacobs, blocked and kept alive and over. Somehow the Rattlers keep it going. And they get a block from Emerald Jacobs as well on that right side. But that time, A.J. Simmons takes some speed off of it and finds the middle of the floor. And sometimes that's all you need is just to change up the speed a little bit rather than going and taking a full swing, drop that thing a little bit short, and end up catching your opponent off guard. Brooke Hudson cleaning the floor a little bit. The graduate transfer from Colorado State. She is already 10th in FAMU history in digs, she's the reigning SWAC libero of the year and libero preseason player of the year. That serve is really tight to the net, but the Rattlers make it work. Isis Williams on the kill. Great hang time there from Isis Williams to get up. That set was a little high, and you saw Niara Hightower jump with the set rather than with her hitter, and that's where Williams was able to hang up there and still get that attack. You talk about not letting them serve more than once. Well, that's one way to do it as the service ace go, uh, error excuse me, goes into the net. BCU up 2-1. Great serve from Jasmine Moore. Rattler's all out of sorts. Just play it over softly. Simmons tries to find that soft middle again. Jacobs dug it out. Back row hit, and it just touched the fingertips of Hightower, and the back row couldn't corral it. That was a tough angle there for Delahousse to try to get on to. You know, you get that sharp four to four from zone four to zone four. That really sharp angle is, is a very difficult ball to try to play. So great job there by Watts to get up and, and really use the whole range of the court. Two straight service errors for Florida A&M. Unlike a Gokhan Yilmaz coach team, his teams are very technically sound normally. The former head coach at UNC Charlotte, the native of Turkey, through the block and down for FAMU as they tie the set at three. That was the freshman Ioni Sanford from Fort Walton Beach up near the Panhandle. And a service ace as the Rattlers take the lead. That's a tough one. That was a great serve coming in there. Um, and you saw Adela Husse just struggle to get her, her feet behind that ball before it made it all the way down to the floor. Nice dig to set this one up. Simmons back row. Jacobs, awkward first contact. She's going to have to play it over. And the first touch goes into the net. It comes right back to Simmons. 
joust at the net, and it's won by FAMU. And there's two schools of thought with uh, with a joust. You have the people that either want to, well, you either want to touch the ball first or you want to touch the ball last. If you're the first person to touch the ball, you've got to get up and turn it into a different angle, basically move it away from the other blocker. If you're second, you're um, banking on the fact that you're going to be up in the air longer and have contact with the ball longer. So there we saw the second person going up win. FAMU in system, they take a 6-3 lead here in sets number three. Up to nothing right now are the Rattlers. Middle attack, and down for Ketal Bryce with that high hitting percentage. Wouldn't be surprised to see her on the floor more often going forward today. Very much so, she is fantastic. She's doing a really great job this year, her, her final year. Uh, making sure that she is, you know, really attacking the floor, um, both from an offensive and defensive perspective. So great job to Ketal. Price, the former high jump star in high school. You can draw a direct line to high jump in volleyball. Back set calendar and powered home by Mecca Freeman. Mecca Freeman is someone we haven't really seen a lot this year. Only 23 kills on the season. She's been moving around a little bit. You know, last year played a whole lot of time on the left side. Um, this year really stepping into a role as a right side attacker. So she's, she's really trying to find herself in whatever role the team needs her to be in. Nice service ace by Alicia Callender. Her eighth of the year. Hudson first contact. Essence Bell with the nice dig. Della Husey somehow saved by FAMU. Powered down again, two straight kills from Mecca Freeman. And we're watching the Wildcats run their isolation offense really, really well. You'll see the middle hitter right now, Ketal Price, coming into the gap, kind of at the bottom of the uh, the BC logo in the middle of the floor. So you've got two hitters over on the closest 10 feet of the court. You're outside on the pin, and then Ketal Price down at the bottom of the logo. And then all the way over on the right side pin, you've got another. Oh, that was up. Wow. Well, the down official called it that called the point, but I, the up official didn't see it. We continue, it's another pancake for FAMU. Callender digs it out, Bell, soft touch, Hudson. Back set on the slide, and somehow Essence Bell gets that over. And BCU wins the point, Mecca Freeman doing everything right now. watching to see the conversation between Coach Williams and the down ref. It looks like the down ref, like you said, he signaled that that pancake was down. And as an athlete, you've got to know that you keep playing until the whistle blows, but that's, uh, that's hard. When one ref says that was a point for one team, it's hard to get over. And eventually, they actually did say it was a point for FAMU. I'm not sure what happened there. It looked like a clean block for Spencer. And FAMU takes another one. Eight to seven, the Rattlers lead in set number three. Brooklyn Watts up to 10 kills to lead everybody in the match. And she is serving now. Nice clean set. Della Huse can't keep that one in play. And this is where you're watching the unforced errors start to mount a little bit. You know, you're, you're kind of giving a couple of points away to Florida A&M after a, a one that you wish you had back. And so this is where they've got to make sure that they're mentally tough enough to come over this hurdle. Quick to the middle, Ketal Price. Just tap that one straight down. And if you're a middle blocker, how hard is that to defend when the opposing middle winds up to swing big and then just gives a little love tap? Very much, very difficult. You know, that kind of um, deception and, and hiding what you're going for. Speaking of deception, a great setter dump there from, uh, 
from De La Rosa, but yeah, that kind of deception, showing a big swing and then just taking a, a short tip over is very, very difficult to defend. Third kill for De La Rosa on the night. Once again, the reigning SWAC setter of the week is FAMU puts it down for the ace. 11 to eight here in set number three. And then it's into the net from Miliana Thornton, the freshman from Atlanta. Six hundred and eighteen aces in her high school career. Thornton couldn't get it down there. And the Rattlers continue their run with a little bit of off speed from Kalia Todd. And we're seeing both sides struggle a little bit with the off speed shot, whether it's a roll shot or a tip. That's where, you know, once you start having those stack up, you've got to uh, almost let go of the hard driven swings, put yourself in a good position, try to make sure that you can have that person hit at you if they're going to take a swing. But otherwise, you've got to get on your horse and go run down the easy stuff. Well, we don't often say this in a Bethune-Cookman match, but FAMU is dominating at the net right now. Another block for the Rattlers. Up to 10 on the night in just three sets. That's, yeah, that's a very big deal. You know, one of the things you'll hear um, the coaching staff say is to get blocked more, but it still does hurt a little bit when you actually do have to take that block. You know, you, you would much rather be swinging into the court and into hands than out of bounds or having a really high unforced error. BCU is hitting, managing, excuse me, BCU is managing their unforced errors really well right now. But at the um, kind of expense of that, they are getting blocked more often and they've got to get over the mental hurdle of, I attack the ball, but that person just, you know, put me away. Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the newest BCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Make sure you are representing Bethune Cookman University Athletics to the fullest. Buy the latest BCU gear online at the Bethune Cookman online store. Go to bcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest BCU clothing and apparel. That's bcuathletics.com and click on shop. 13 9 BCU hanging on to FAMU's coattails here in this third set, trying not to fall to their nemesis from the highest of Seven Hills, three sets to nil. And for a team in Bethune Cookman that was finished picked to finish fourth in the SWAC preseason poll. It's been a rocky, kind of a rocky start in conference play. Overpass punished by the green and orange. That was, uh, that was an interesting no call by the ref there. That ball was, uh, it appeared to be going over the net, but it looked like the Florida A&M um, blocker was fully on the BCU side when she contacted that. So. Uh, I, I think that was a little bit of a missed call there from the up ref. Great job by Mecca Freeman. She is really taking over this game for Bethune Cookman right now. A little bit of creativity, pushes it off the outside hand of the blocker and down 14-10 FAMU. And that's where BCU's isolation offense is really shining. You know, they're able to run their offense through their right side attacker. Their opposites always have a big day, have a big game and you just want to make sure that you're really holding on to that. Well, you can't keep Diana Hightower down for long as she gets her second solo block of the evening. BCU down by three in that flat serve of Madison Coates is rejected again. Two straight blocks for number one. And Niara Hightower is just a force to be reckoned with up on the net. She is absolutely someone that could, you know, if she continues in this direction, could end up one of the top blockers in the country. Again, off speed, a challenge for both teams defensively as FAMU stops a little BCU run, pushes the lead back to three, 15 to 12. This will be freshman Sydney Humes to serve now from Homewood, Alabama.
Coates quick to the middle. Fantastic dig by Hudson. Wildcats have another chance though. Simmons from the back row. Blocked again by Isis Williams. The Rattler, Rattler block is really just making sure that they are in Wildcat airspace. They're doing a fantastic job of getting in the way, making sure that they are running the defense. So hats off to Florida A&M and their block right now. Eight total blocks for Williams alone. But that time she couldn't push it back the other way as Williams Hightower having, puts it down. Williams is having a night. She is doing a great job. And you really want to see Hightower kind of take that as a personal challenge to say who can impact this game more right now. Isis Williams in her senior year out of Louisville, Texas. Oh, that's beautiful. That may be about as perfect as you can serve a volleyball. Very much so. Just painted the inside of that back line. You saw the entire Florida A&M uh, passing line kind of get out of the way, hoping that it was going to go out of bounds, and it just dropped right into the court. And there you see the feast or famine, which is Jasmine Moore at the service line. One moment, she, she, that maybe is the best serve I've ever seen. The next one, it's in the net. Those are always a, a tough roller coaster to ride, but that's something that you kind of expect with a jump top spin serve because you're going and you're attacking it so aggressively, it's going to have a higher air percentage. So it's something that the coaching staff is kind of already taken into account. Tough swing for Della Husey and she is bailed out by Melina Spencer. And the Wildcats are now down just one, 17-16. Nobody has used their timeouts yet in this third set. Hightower, that standing serve, pushed wide. Watts has to send it back in court. Coates, some wires got crossed there on the VCU front line, gives a free chance for FAMU and they take it. Yeah, that was uh, one of the ones where the volleyball gods have spoken. That was a, a pretty, um, well, not the prettiest of sets from Madison Coates. So VCU got a, a little stay of execution, you know, with the, the ref allowing them to play on, but Florida A&M capitalized on it. And that time a poor first contact. So Wildcats in their own head a little bit. They were down by just one and now back down by four and they'll take their first time out of the set. We're watching the Wildcats start to get a little bit out of sorts. They're, they're kind of chasing their tails. You'll see that um, it's not really one thing that's going wrong. There is a bad first contact. Then the next point, there's a bad set. Then the next point, there's you know not taking advantage of an opportunity on the attack. You've got to kind of shore everything up a little bit and get yourself back into your default volleyball setting so that you're not just chasing all of these different errors and never able to catch up. Well, if Florida A&M does three-peat as SWAC champions, and that is by no means guaranteed with the way the SWAC tournament is, uh, SWAC is playing out this year, uh, they will want to avoid Gainesville if at all possible. They've been drawn the Gators the first two games in the national tournament each of the last two seasons. And it's, it's kind of tough, right? When you're a smaller school like this, you know you're gonna be sent somewhere like a Florida, like a Florida State like a Miami, but drawing the same team two years in a row and having the same result go by, it's kind of demoralizing a little bit. A little bit, it's tough, you know, the university, and, and it's not necessarily something that's going to change anytime soon, or at least it doesn't appear to be. Um, the University of Florida has a fantastic program. Mary Wise, the head coach there, has, you know, really done a great job with the Gators, um, and they are just perennially in the top of the country. They are, are absolutely always at the top of the NCAA. So it's very, um, very unlikely that, you know, whether it's Florida A&M, whether it's Bethune Cookman, or maybe even other um, other SWAC opponents, other, other, if, you know, another team was to win the SWAC, they would likely end up going to Florida as well, and that's a tough draw. BCU was in the net on that last point. And a service ace dropped in perfectly by FAMU. They are four points away and racing towards a three set win.
Scroggins to serve. Again, drops it into the middle. Delahuse, big swing. Scroggins pushes it across. And a huge swing by Shelby Chamberlain. That pass went freshman to freshman for the FAMU kill. Scroggins serves. Delahuse off speed. Scroggins recovers. And that attack is long by Chamberlain. Now VCU really has to take advantage of this. They're getting, you know, two new people on the court right now, a little bit of fresh energy coming in. You want to make sure that you're going back, and especially as Calendar is trying to take on this service run right now, making sure that she is putting Florida AM out of system and making their life very difficult as they try to return this ball because you have to score multiple points right now. BCU in the exact same place they were in set number one, down 22-16. They climbed all the way back to 22-21, but could not close out set number one. Then they lost set number two, 25-22, in a set that went back and forth for the majority of it. Calendar serving. Forearm set. Wildcats keep it alive, and the pass went back to Jasmine Moore, who was sprawled on the floor after the dig. Those are tough, you know, those were a bang-bang play. That ball comes over really quick. Uh, Moore is still on the floor, still trying to recover from her initial dig and ends up kind of taking it back. Uh, that, that's just a tough one there. You've got to make sure that as you're playing these balls, you're playing them as high as possible to give yourself time to go and finish out the rest of the play. Really tight in, really tight in the net. FAMU makes it work, back row attack. Another block, this time from Miana Thornton. Thornton is someone who Coach Yilma has brought in this season, the freshman from Atlanta who they really think she could be the future of this program. 6-1 already as a freshman, 93 kills and leading the team in hitting percentage with a 318. Wildcats try and slow play it again. Back row attack goes long, no touch. BCU still alive, 24-17. And now you've got Riley Davis coming in, you know, subbing in for freshman Mia Delahuse. So she's got a heck of a serve on her. Let's see how far she can get this Wildcats team and see if they can make it all the way back up to take this set. Five aces on the season for Davis. Won't be one that time as Hudson recovers. And on an error, Fam, you will take the match. The third set was their best one, 25 to 17. That was a, a big fight there. You saw the Wildcats kind of jump out um, and, and play very strong very early on. But this is also, it's senior night. It's very emotional. It's their homecoming weekend. That's a, a very difficult kind of adrenaline dump to have to um, overcome. So I think that might have played a factor in it was just you, you come out after the kind of um, pop and circumstance of senior night and trying to make sure that you're playing great for those seniors. And then, you know, as the, the kind of adrenaline wears off, it gets tougher and tougher to fight through that and still play as disciplined and as, as well as you know you can. So that was a, a tough end to the match, but I think that BCU has a lot to be proud of. Wildcats will have to pick themselves up quickly. They go to Alabama a and a team they beat in a very close match here at Moore Gymnasium to click off conference play. They go there next weekend. They go there and Alabama State. So a tough road trip before coming back the 29th and 30th for their SWAC cluster. And if you split the road trip one and one, then you're five and six coming into the, the pool play and you got to work from there. Very much so. I mean, the, the pool play is a great opportunity for the Wildcats to kind of rack up some wins, rack up um, some places in the standings. You know, you want to make sure that you're really progressing as you're going into the end of the year. So as much as it, it stings to kind of lose this match and to be in the position that you're in, you've got to remember that there is a lot going on, that you still have a lot of time left and a lot of ability to, to move forward and advance yourself going into the conference tournament. And remember, if you didn't follow this women's volleyball team last year, 
They won nine of their last 15 matches to make a run to the SWAC semifinals. So never count out the Wildcats until it's mathematically unable to do so anymore. Quick, a couple of quick stats from tonight. Uh, FAMU out killed VCU 42-31. Uh, actually, uh, errors were close, 18-17. VCU had one more error than FAMU did. FAMU hit 236, VCU 126. But uh, total blocks, 13 for FAMU, just seven for Bethune-Cookman. They were dominant at the net, both offensively and defensively. They did a great job. I mean, uh, Florida A&M really came in and kind of showed who they were, showed what they were, you know, going to um, kind of force the Wildcats to be up against. And the Wildcats handled it well, but just in the end, couldn't quite make it there and, and beat this Rattler team. We'll be back in more gymnasium on the 29th of October as Arkansas Pine Bluff comes to town for the start of SWAC pool play. Until then, for director of the Cat Eye Network, Eugene Robinson, SIDs, Bryce Wynowski, and Brian Harvey, Taylor Pritchard alongside myself. We have a little bit of the audio hiccups at the beginning of this broadcast. Thank you for sticking out with us to the very end. Once again, your final score, FAMU 3, Bethune Cookman nothing. Have a very good rest of your evening and come out to homecoming tomorrow at 3 p.m. at Daytona Stadium.